here is a reaction of artificial transmutation. We are shooting neutrons into uranium-235. The uranium-235 is an unstable isotope of uranium, and it can undergo a natural decay. But the half-life of that uh, decay is several billion years. So to make our uranium more unstable, to change this nuclei into something that is more unstable, that will decay faster, we are shooting neutrons into it. For a sh very short period of time, uranium-235 is transformed into different isotope of uranium, uranium-236. This isotope is so unstable that almost immediately it splits into two smaller nuclei, into barium-141 and krypton-92, and three neutrons released in the process. This stage of uranium-236 isotope is very short-lived. It exists for a split second, even less so than, than that. So we can omit it from our equation altogether. So practically, we're firing a neutron into uranium-235, initiating the split of this big nuclei into two smaller nuclei of barium-141 and krypton-92, and three neutrons released in the process. This kind of reaction, when a big nuclei splits into smaller ones, is called fission. This particular reaction of fission is quite famous. It is the one that was used in the first nuclear bombs, and it is still the same reaction that we are using these days in our nuclear power plants to produce energy. Here is a basic definition of fission. It is a process when large, high-energy, unstable nuclei split into smaller ones and energy released in the process. And to initiate, to start this uh, split, we're actually helping. We're shooting the neutron into the atom of uranium, big, fat atom of uranium, which initiates the split of this big atom into two smaller ones, krypton and barium and energy released in the process, and also three neutrons released as well. Here is an interesting question. If every fission reaction produces energy during the split of an atom, why do we not hear about naturally occurring explosions caused by fission reactions? After all, our planet has uranium-235 and some other fissionable materials. Some of the free roaming neutrons are bound to run into them now and then. Well, the split of one atom of uranium is giving off a very small amount of energy. It is not enough to cause an explosion or any kind of destruction or damage. To produce a significant amount of energy, an explosive amount of energy, we must arrange a cascade of fission reactions. A lot of atoms must split. The first split of an atom is just a beginning. We initiate it. Uh, the first one by shooting neutrons into nucleus of uranium. After uranium splits into two smaller nuclei, three neutrons are released. If they hit three atoms of uranium-235, they will initiate three more fusion reactions. And in each of them, three neutrons will be released. Now we have nine neutrons re ready to hit another atoms of uranium and initiate the process of fusion. The numbers grow very quickly. Before long, we have a huge number of uranium atoms undergoing fission, and combined energy released in all of these reactions is huge. Explosion, here we come. But natural uh, uranium deposits contain mostly uranium-238, and only 0.7% of it made of fissionable uranium-235. That is too little to, uh, for the process to sustain itself. Neutrons that are produced in the first fission just don't find enough uranium-235 atoms to heat in on, and the process dies down. The uranium that is used in power plants and nuclear bombs is enriched. It is intentionally processed to increase concentration of uranium-235 to ensure the cascade of fission reactions that will produce a lot of energy. Here is schematic representation of nuclear plant. Let's look at its parts. Inside the confinement shell, we find the reactor and a boiling room. Reactor is a place where nuclear reaction occurs. This is where purified and enriched uranium is bombarded with neutrons that initiate the fission reactions. 
because concentration of uranium-235 is intentionally, intentionally increased in the blocks placed inside of the reactor, the neutrons have no trouble finding other uranium-235 nuclei, causing multiple fusion reaction, producing a lot of energy in the form of heat. The heat is transferred into the boiling room, where it is used to boil water. Steam produced goes through the steam turbine, which generates electricity. The steam is sent into the condenser's chamber, where it cools down and condenses back into liquid water, which is then sent back into the boiling room. To speed up condensation of the steam into water, power plants take water from a river or a lake nearby and runs it through the tubes inside of the condensing chamber and then returns it back into the river or lake. Not at any point the water from the river goes anywhere near the radioactive material, and it is usually pride and joy of people working there. They say, we take in clean water, we return clean water, no contamination, and most of the time it is true. But while the water is returned into the river uh, might be clean, it is much warmer and if you remember well the rules of solubility of gases, you would know that warmer water would contain much less oxygen dissolved in it, which affects negatively the population of fish in the river. Also, as the fissionable material in the reactor gets low in the concentration of uranium-235, we no longer can use it. It is still contains plenty of radioactive atoms that will undergo multiple steps of decays for centuries to come, producing very dangerous and highly penetrating gamma radiation. But that energy discharge is not big enough to be useful in the power plant. So now we have radioactive materials that we have, no, uh, that we have to store somewhere until it decays into something stable. And time-wise, we're talking about centuries of time. Even without some catastrophic meltdown of the reactor, in the long run, nuclear plants pose a significant danger. So why do we use them, considering that they are kind of a glorified tea kettles? Well, the amount of heat produced in the fission reaction is so much greater than the amount of heat that we're getting out of chemical reactions of burning coal or natural ga gas or oil that we can't live without it. Our demands for energy is getting only higher and nuclear energy, while dangerous, still is a relatively cheap way to produce a lot of energy. But even that is not the end of the story. While nuclear plants produce a lot of energy, they still will run into the same problem that we are facing now with coal and oil and natural gas. There aren't that much of uranium-235 on our planet. And considering the rate at which we are consuming it, will soon run out. So scientists were looking for other fissionable materials or ways to create it. That is how breeders' reactor, reactors were created. They are called to breed, to produce fissionable materials. The regular reactor only decreases the amount of uranium-235. But in the breeder reactor, the fuel blocks contain uranium-235 and uranium-238. Fission of uranium-235 produces energy here and now but uranium-238 is placed in the reactor to be bombarded by neutrons. When uranium-238 absorbs a neutron, it becomes a very unstable isotope of uranium, uranium-239, which undergoes natural beta decay into neptunium-239, which in its turn decays into plutonium-239. And plutonium-239 is a fissionable material that can be used to fuel other reactions. It can replace uranium-235 when we'll run out of it. However, in Germany, the United Kingdom, and the United States, breeder reactors development programs have been abandoned, and probably for a good reason, as plutonium-239 happened to be highly toxic and flames at the con contact with air, so not the safest isotope as you can imagine. Okay, some practice questions. Which phrase best describes this type of reaction and the overall energy change in that that occurs? 
and the picture here is clearly a fission, so it's a nuclear reaction and energy is released. And here, I'm actually glad that we have this picture, uh, shows you that uranium-235 not always needs to be split into barium and kryptonium. It can be sometimes a different split. Here it is into tellurium and zirconium and two neutrons produced in the process. But still, we have a split of bigger atom into small ones, so it is fission, nuclear reaction, and energy is released. Which statement best describes what happened in fission reaction? Number four looks like a very good answer. It is a correct answer. Heavy nuclei splits into two lighter nuclei. Please don't get tricked by answer number two. While it has a good beginning, energy is released as it is in the uh, fission reactions. The second half of this phrase, less stable elements are formed, this one is incorrect not for fission. The uh, split of uranium or another big atom in the fission reaction happens to form a more stable atoms and release energy in the process. Which type of reaction does the diagram illustrate? Well, it's clear fission. We have huge atom that splits into two smaller ones and few neutrons released in the process. This is fission. Big one splits into two smaller ones. Energy is released. 